some people call me an artist. I, uh, I mean, it's flattering, but I'm not. Uh, I have friends that are artists, but I'm a damn good furniture maker. Wait a minute. There's probably not a woodworker in America who's not heard of Gary Bennett, even though he's the renegade, he's the, the exception to the rule. Let me get a nice chunk of scrap aluminum. Aluminum. Hey, look at this, pretty radical stuff is, you know. That was a straight board at one time. Look at that. Amazing. Gary Knox Bennett designs furniture using a wide range of unconventional up. materials. There's another piece of that bent wood. Look at that. Now this, this would shiver the timbers of woodies, as I call them, because they think, oh my god, you're going to ruin your blade on, with metal. Not so. Over the past four decades, he's handcrafted hundreds of pieces, each one unique. Gary Bennett was one of the first furniture makers to use a lot of uh, formica, aluminum. He even uh, included bricks in one of his uh, furniture pieces. So right away that sets him apart as an unusual furniture maker. That's Noguchi on Sticks. That's the title of that. Quite a beautiful color to it, kind of a... Gary of studied drawing and painting at the California College of Arts and Crafts in the early 60s. During that time, he taught himself to weld and began experimenting with steel sculptural work, a path that eventually led him to functional art. You know, this is uh, galvanized sheet metal. This is one of the lamps from the 100 Lamp Show. They're on touch switches. These are those lawn chairs. I did this one for a show that was, uh, the theme was upholstery. So that was my upholstery. I'm long-legged, so I can sit in them, comfortable. The thing about Gary's work is that it, it has, it's not just about wood, and it's not just about precious things. It's about anything that will, when you, when you put them together in the right way, anything that will create something that's, that's really pleasing to look at and possesses good design and, and is very artful. In 2001, the Oakland Museum held a retrospective of Gary's work, keeping one of his trestle tables for their permanent collection. Most of the time you'd see a tabletop, and if it, if it was going to be ornamented in any way, it would be the tabletop, because that's what you see. But Gary's kind of flipped that around, and in this table, you're very drawn to the legs. They're very thick, they're very beautifully formed. And many of Gary's pieces have that little inlaid checkerboard that is kind of his signature. If someone made a desk and had all this fancy inlay marquetry and, and stuff, it's like Gary does it and it's this little tiny thing. It, it takes what, what other woodworkers do and, you know, flips them around so the big becomes the tiny. Oh yeah, there it is. Holy moly. In 1979, oh, he, he uh, built a very fabulous cabinet and he, he wanted it to be like the, what he calls the Woodies, this perfect cabinet. And uh, when he finished it, he drove a large nail into the, to the door of it. And this uh, caused a huge sensation in the world of woodworking. The nail, you know, I, I would say pretty well into this thing, I wanted to do something uh, hurtful to it, so to speak. And so Gary achieved a kind of notoriety that really endures until today. Gary is currently working on a series of chairs for another exhibit at the Oakland Museum. Uh, a woman told me one time, a chair, chairs and shoes are the hardest things to make. And I says, why is that? She says, well, they have to be light, they have to be strong, they have to be aesthetically pleasing, and they have to be comfortable, and that's a chair. He lays in bed at night thinking of ideas, and, and literally he will go in the, the shop the next day and, and start executing these, but he doesn't even do drawings. And, and I have a little bit of an art background, and I remember being in class, and it was always, you've got to do your drawings, you've got to do your sketch. 
And, and Gary is more like a painter or a sculptor. He just, hey, this is my idea, let's, let's start doing it. And then we'll just change it as it goes along. That freedom, I think, has helped, helped him really cultivate his work and his eye. And I like to work curves against, uh, you know, rectilinear shapes. You can have a lot of rectilinear shapes and one nice little sweet curve or a fair amount of curves and then one nice sharp little thing. So I'll, I'll just, uh, I use this curve quite a bit. And I remember in high school, they had what's called a French curve, but I think you can make them just as good if you're a goddamn genius. The amp, amp U dash T dash club welcomes Gary Bennett uh, to it. Well, that's when I cut the finger off. He gave me the amp U T club award. <laughs> this is really pushing it here. He's really doing one of a kind, you know, there, he may do series, but it's not like an assembly line production. So he's not gonna be as prolific as some other furniture makers. But over the course of his career, I would say he has been prolific in the multitude of forms he's made. Standing in the right place. It just, it's just, I'm, I don't wanna take a spill. It's taken Gary a year to complete nearly 50 chairs for the Oakland Museum exhibition. One week before the show, his living room is overflowing with finished work. X, Y, Z. There's the X, there's the Z, there's the Y. So we Many of Gary's works are takeoffs on the signature styles of other famous designers. 16 of the chairs for this show are based on Dutch designer Garrett Rietveld's zigzag chair. This obviously is a wing chair, you know. Aluminum wings. This is Martha for Martha Stewart. And it's um, <clears throat> done on a plastic lawn chair. This is an ugly bugger, man, but it sure is comfortable. Things get, you, things get away from you when you're working. You know, you think, well, man, that's really a good idea. And you're working away. And when you get finished, you got, you know, you got an ugly stepchild. I really think this is my best chair. It's very light, strong, and according to me, it's good looking. But I, I really like, I like this, this goes to Sylvia. I won't sell that chair. Gary and his wife Sylvia have been married for more than 40 years. Over that time, they've collected hundreds of handmade works, an eclectic mix of objects that reflects the passion they share. For the first time ever, Gary and Sylvia are showing off highlights of their collection in the inaugural show of the San Francisco Museum of Craft and Design. Well, this is a piece of Judy McKee's, and Sylvia stores all her dishes and all her glasses in it. It's very handy, very works really good. See, I own it, I get to touch it. And I saw this bench, and it just knocked me out. It's just strips of felt pallet straps strapped on there. Beautiful piece, simple, elegant, and comfortable. This guy here, John Coonan, you can't get any better than that. I mean, it's perfect. It balances yeah, it's I would give anything to be able to, just to be that loose and free and, you know, you know, as you get, I don't know, as you get on in this life, you just you seem to get you know, tighter and tighter, I know I do. I, I, I can't help myself. Uh, I'll start a series real loose and end up, boy, everything's just perfect, you know. And I'm gonna do red. Blue is a very difficult color. Some of the challenges that Gary's had in his career have, have centered around this question of recognition. He's very well recognized in the field of woodworking, the field of craft, but in the field of art, the radar screen does not include him. Oh, look at that. Cad red, cad orange, cad red light. Ah! This is really difficult to paint on demand like this. 
Retirement to me has about the same meaning as diet to some poor f in the streets of Bombay. You know, I mean, why would you restrict your in intake of food? And nobody I know that does this, the painters and the furniture makers and the sculptors, they work every day. All the people that I respect work every day.